Hi, I'm Mark Müller and I'm a geographer at the University of Zurich in Switzerland. As everybody's looking at the World Cup in Brazil now in June and July 2014, we hear comparatively little about the next World Cup, which is going to be hosted in four years' time in Russia. And that's quite surprising because already now that World Cup has some of the same problems and issues that the World Cup in Brazil has run into. And, most strikingly, it's probably going to be the most expensive World Cup ever. Already now the costs are projected to be at about 21 billion US dollars. Similar to Brazil, Russia is planning to host the World Cup in 12 stadia across the European part of Russia. So that's from um, Kaliningrad in the very west to Yekaterinburg in the very east in the Urals. And those 12 stadia are more than the minimum requirement of FIFA. FIFA usually requires a minimum of 8 stadia. And 10 of the stadia are completely constructed from scratch, whereas 2 are going to be remodeled for the World Cup. And among those 2 is probably the most famous stadium in Russia, the Luzhniki Stadium in Moscow, which was also the Olympic Stadium for the 1980 Summer Games and also hosts um, regularly very high-profile football matches in Europe. So the big distances, uh, the big geographical distances, are one of the things that both Bra Brazil and Russia have to deal with. Um, Russia doesn't have a particularly well-developed land-based transport system, so much of the uh, flying back and forth between the cities um, is going to rely on the airports. And there Russia is planning to uh, particularly expand the provincial airports, which are at the moment too small for FIFA requirements. Um, and that's partly going to happen with permanent new terminals, partly going to happen with temporary installations. If you look at the stadia, I think the greatest cause for concern here at the moment is um, the massive cost overruns that have already happened and the massive costs in the first place. So um, the initial cost for the 12 stadia um, for the bid was projected to be at 2.8 billion US dollars and it's now four years out already risen to close to 7 billion US dollars. So to give you a sense of how much that is, if we break this down per seat, it's 11,600 US dollars per seat. And that's four times more expensive than the World Cup 2006 in Germany. And it's uh, almost um, twice as expensive as uh, the per seat cost of the current World Cup stadia in Brazil. So um, if Brazil was already called a wasteful, a profligate World Cup, I think what we are going to see in Russia is going to be even more costly. Once the stadia are built, um, there's going to be another problem, and that's the problem of overcapacities. The stadia are going to add close to half a million new seats to the existing stadia capacity in Russia. But the problem is that, um, in general, not a lot of people go to football games in Russia. So even the Premier League has only an average attendance of about 12,000 people per match. And current, current stadium capacities are um, enough to, to accommodate those 12,000 people. So what we're seeing with um, the smallest stadia of, of the World Cup being 45,000 seats, and then, um, I mean, it goes up to 90, almost 90,000 seats, is uh, going to be massive overcapacities. And that, of course, has um, a negative impact on the financial viability. So hardly any of those stadia um, projects are going to be financially viable and that's also why there are hardly any private investors um, putting the money into those projects but it's um, the state and the public that are paying for this already inflated bill um, for the World Cup stadium. So Russia when it initially launched its bid for the World Cup it was hoping that the World Cup could serve as a catalyst for, mo for the modernization of the country and by modernization, what was meant was um, infrastructure development, um, economic growth, um, more um, play uh, for free market forces, less state intervention, more private investment. But in fact, we're seeing the opposite now. We are seeing that the state has to take on a lot of the bill, that a lot of the investment is unproductive and only um, made for the event in question. And that's um, quite uh, a challenge and issue for Russia because economic growth is rather low. It's predicted to be at almost zero for 2014 and at just about 1% for 2015. And Russia is experiencing um, massive capital flight right now with the crisis in Ukraine and in Crimea. So instead of attracting private investment, um, it's actually money, there's actually money flowing out of the country. 
So the World Cup is uh, almost proving to be the opposite rather than a catalyst. It seems to be a burden uh, to the already burdened um, budget of Russia. If you want to learn more about that, there's a working paper that I've written that you can look at. It's called Event Seizure, the World Cup 2018 and Russia's Elusive Quest for Modernization. And you can download it from my website at www.martin-muller.net. Thanks for listening and uh, have fun with the World Cup.